Alright lads, in the newest update, the big boy is here, the Macabre Mark IV. Today we're going to be covering the Mark IV as well as the Mark IV-M, as they are pretty much just copy and paste. Apart from the Mark IV-M has the Active Protection System or the Hardcore Protection System as it's also called. Both tanks are in the 7th rank of the Israeli tech tree and are located at battery rating 7.0. There are slight differences between the research and cost but I'm just going to cover the Mark IV-M because it is the top of the top tier so to speak. The Macava Mark IV will set you back 400,000 research points and you can unlock it by paying 1,080,000 silver lions. No wonder those Israeli taxes are so high. Anyway, to put this vehicle in your lineup it's going to cost you an additional 310,000 silver lions. And for the expert in ace qualifications, it's 1,080,000 silver lions and 2,200 golden eagles. In terms of rewards, and when playing with a premium account on realistic battles, the Mark IV-M will give you a reward modifier of 488% and a silver line modifier of 255%. In terms of customization, there are a few camouflages available for Golden Eagles, but there are none available on the Gaijin Marketplace at the time of recording. However, that is likely to change. So, with the Macavas being the most recent main battle tanks added to War Thunder, are they meta-changing, or are they pretty much dead on arrival? Well, let's get into the video, lads, and find out. Alright, I guess we'll start with the mobility and survivability. The latter of which, the Macabre is rather famous for. But anyway, this tank is powered by an engine producing 1,500 horsepower, a similar power level to the American Abrams tank. However, this tank does use a traditional diesel, technically I guess a multi-fuel. Anyway, the tank does weigh an incredible amount, 65 tonnes. This gives it a power to weight ratio of 23.1 horsepower per tonne. This is by no means amazing for top tier, but the Macabre does feel pretty snappy. It must have quite a lot of torque because it doesn't feel sluggish despite it weighing 65 tonnes worth of steel. This does have a forward and reverse gearbox I guess you could call it. You can go the same speed in reverse as you can going forwards. It's quite good for retreating I guess, although you don't really want to be doing that too much in War Thunder or in real life. But you can reach a top speed of 65 km per hour in forwards and reverse. But what about survivability? Well, this tank does have composite armor, smoke grenades, it can create a smoke screen with its exhaust, and it also has a laser warning receiver, the last one of which is particularly helpful when dealing with helicopters. There's also one other trick the Mark Arva Mark IV M has, but we'll get to that shortly. But, this tank has a crew of four men, a driver in the front of the hull, and a gunner commander and locator located in the turret. The Macabre is also fairly unique as a main battle tank. Due to the fact that the engine is mounted in the front of the vehicle, and you also have several fuel tanks at the front of the vehicle as well, giving you some extra protection. Now, make no mistake, against modern APFSDS rounds, this frontal mounted engine will do absolutely nothing to protect you. Absolutely nothing. We have to bear in mind that the biggest threat to Israel in real life is going to be a bunch of people armed with RPGs, shall we say, and rather antiquated weapon systems. Basically, the main threat of the Israelis is going to be high explosive anti-tank warheads and weapons like that, not the high performance APFSDS rounds. The Palestinians have been very creative, but I don't think they've got any 120mm L55 guns hidden away. This means that the Israelis have pumped a lot into the uh, stats of armour protection against high explosive anti-tanks, so we've got a lot of composite armour. We've got the frontally mounted engine which will eat up high explosive anti-tank rounds, but not APFSDS rounds. And you know, the Macava Mark IV is very survivable in real life against high explosive anti-tank rounds. It's very good for urban combat if it's supported with infantry. But the Macavas and the Israelis in real life aren't really expecting a major tank on tank battle. There isn't really a peer in the Middle East with Israel at the minute. Saudi Arabia and Israel are basically allies, and the Iranians have been sanctioned so much that they can barely afford cars, never mind tanks. Geopolitics aside though boys, what I'm trying to say is, the Macava is heavily statted into protection against high explosive anti-tank. Which is great for real life, but in War Thunder, nobody at top tier is going to be firing high explosive anti-tank at you, unless they're completely stuck and probably suffering as well as much as you are. This means that your armour, while very effective against certain ammunition, is rather redundant at top tier. But we'll get to that shortly. I said that we did have one other trick, and that is the active protection system, the Trophy HV. This basically uses a high explosive grenade which is fired towards an incoming missile or high explosive anti-tank shell, and will basically detonate 
and as a result the pressure wave will also destroy the incoming projectile. Now this has a threat velocity between 70 to 1000 meters per second. So a lot of APFSDS rounds and the higher tier heater fest shells will not be able to be stopped by this, mis this type of active protection system. It's mainly effective against infantry fighting vehicles such as BMP-2s which have like top mounted rocket launchers. As well as the missiles coming from helicopters and other er to ground missiles really. It saved my life quite a few times and it basically pisses off helicopter pilots which is always a plus for me. But you get six individual launches of this thing, you get three on either side, so you get three missile protections from the left and three from the right if you understand. You can recap these at a capture point just like normal ammunition. But I said about the armour of this thing so let's take a quick look at that. Using the tank's own main gun against itself at a range of 200 meters, you can see that the most heavily protected part of our armor on the lower frontal plate, or the hull should I say rather, is around 310 millimeters thick. Against the modern APF SDS rounds in War Thunder, this is absolutely nothing. And because the profile of the Makava is quite uniform, it's the same kind of square with m minor sloping, a center of mass shot on the Makava is likely going to do you serious damage. Now the armor does improve as we go up to the turret and it will mostly, an incoming APF SDS round will mostly penetrate the turret from the front. You can see here I've got the cursor where it's at its absolute thickest at around 630 millimeters of protection. But above and below the actual flat part of the turret it is substantially weaker. Again, just like the American Abrams tank, you do have a very large turret ring underneath where you can see it's like uh, just underneath the gun basically. It's very weakly protected against APF SDS rounds and pretty much all types of ammunition. It's going to be absolutely fantastic for anyone using high explosive shells. You can put a you can put a HE round right underneath the turret chin and it's going to overpressure the shit out of the crew. So while the survivability in real life is absolutely famed for the Macavers, in War Thunder I fear it's not incredibly well protected. It's not very survivable really. Against the early APF SDS rounds as well as the uh, ground to ground and air to ground missile systems it is quite effective it is survivable that a large amount of composite in the turret and hull does eat up some high explosive anti-tank warheads but when it comes to trading with a tank a tank on tank engagement isn't going to be a you can't really tank incoming rounds with this tank i guess you shouldn't really say tank that many times but enough about the armor let's get on with the good stuff all right, the gun. And the Macavers use the same 120mm L44 gun found on pretty much all the NATO main battle tanks, especially the M1 Abrams, or the M1A1 Abrams, sorry, should I say. This is an Israeli-made variant, so it's not exactly the same. There is one major difference in game, but we'll get to that shortly. The tank can carry 46 rounds of ammunition in total. It has a two-plane gun stabiliser, as you'd expect for such a high battery rating vehicle. Being a mid-mounted turret, there are some downsides. While you do get 20 degrees of gun elevation, you do get a rather average 7 degrees of gun depression. And considering the hull of this tank is so weak, you really ought to be going hull down, so 7 degrees of gun depression is going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a downside I guess, but it's still workable. Now, we come on to the first major weak point of this tank, and that is the reload rate. For some reason, the base reload rate of this tank is 8.7 seconds, whereas the ace reload speed is 6.7 seconds. This is substantially slower than most of the other NATO main battle tanks currently in the game, and it's only just faster than the most common autoloader in the Soviet tech tree. So most T-72s and T-90s have a 7.1 second reload rate, whereas the T-80s have a 6.5 second reload rate. So even with a fully ace crew, a stock T-80U or T-80 variant will reload faster than you. This may very well be a glitch or something that Gaijin just forgot to implement, and it could get buffed in the future really. I don't really see why an American tank can reload in 6 seconds, but the Macava can only reload in 6.7 seconds before you maxed out. Doesn't really make much sense to me. I do believe the Macava does have some sort of auto or somewhat automatic reloader. The, re the tank doesn't reload itself, but I believe a round is given out or presented to the loader automatically. So that might be the reason it's so slow, because they have to wait for the actual round to be given to the loader. But anyway, as I said, the tank does have a laser warning receiver, a laser rangefinder, as well as second generation thermal imaging for the gunner and commander's sights. 
We then come on to the ammunition, and our stock shell is a heater fast round. This is the M325. It travels at 1078 meters per second, and it has a high explosive anti-tank warhead containing 2.36 kilos of TNT. This gives it 480 millimeters of penetration. It's not terrible for a high explosive anti-tank round, but it's not particularly amazing. We do also have the M339 stock shell. This is a high explosive time fused round, and probably would have been used against infantry targets. When in War Thunder, it doesn't really serve any sort of point, to be honest, really. We then have an APF SDS round, the M322. This travels at 1705 meters per second and weighs 5.6 kilos. Against armor angles at 60 degrees and at a range of 1000 meters, the tank can penetrate 327 millimeters of armor, which is very respectable. Things improve though with the M338 round. This is actually lighter and slower weighing only 5.06 kilos and traveling at 1680 meters per second. But again, against the same 60 degree angled armor and at a distance of 1000 meters, it can penetrate 338 millimeters of armor. This is a very impressive gun, especially for only an L44 gun, and not a long barreled variant of the 120 millimeter. So while it doesn't have the high performance of something like the Leopard 2A6, you don't really need it. You, do, you still get the, you still penetrate enemy tanks with a 600 plus mil gun, so it doesn't really matter about uh, the pedantics really. Other than the main gun, you do have several rifle caliber machine guns, as well as a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on the roof of the V of the well roof of the tank sorry starting to see a trend with israeli vehicles aren't we protection against chemical warheads and an emphasis on anti-personnel weapons so are the macabres worth grinding i'm gonna go out and say yes definitely while they are while the armor is a little bit hit and miss to be honest it's not as good as something that's a bit smaller like the t80u or the well some of the other tanks in game type 10 the Macabre Mark IV-M is very effective, and the Mark IV-B is just as effective, really. The active protection system is a nice addition, but it is largely a gimmick at top tier. The main opponent is going to be APFSDS firing tanks, not... I mean, there are helicopters a lot at top, kit, at top tier, which it does counter pretty effectively. While if the, if the enemy helicopter does choose to spam missiles at you, they will kill you, but it gives you, like three missiles to get into cover and get away from them which is a very very welcome addition but the mobility of the macabres is good is i was pleasantly surprised the macabre mark twos currently in game are absolute pigs to drive but the mark four is very very responsive it does feel good to drive the armor's all right as i've covered the gun from my experience is fantastic it's hard hitting the reload is the only problem really it's, it's quite long it's too long really for a nato gun i know it's not a nato country but it's kind of a nato gun you don't really have a wide choice of ammunition it's just the bog standard apf sds and heat thermals are good laser range finder and warning receiver is good it's a nice new addition to the game but it doesn't really add anything new i don't think it's meta changing it's it's a nice addition I don't really know what else they're going to add to the Israeli tech tree. It's quite bare bones, but regardless, it's still a nice vehicle. I do enjoy playing the Macabre Mark IV. It's, it's actually really enjoyable. I don't really know why I'm being sentimental, but it, it, I did have fun playing it. So what more could you want really from a game? Anyway, lads, if you did like the video, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you really love the video, then consider becoming a channel member. Just like Just Someone, Destroyer 1805, Dr. Bob, Tans, Deboa LX, William Tessier, and Lola Alfonsi. Thank you very much, lads, for becoming members. And once again, thank you very, very, very much for watching, and I'll see you in another video.